Hi, welcome back. Today uh, I'm going to demonstrate a slow flight in a Cessna 172. Uh, slow flight is important because during slow flight the performance of the airplane is very similar to the performance of the airplane when it's landing. During slow flight practice in a real airplane, you want to keep the plane at plus or minus 100 feet of initial altitude. But for a Microsoft Flight Simulator, it's much harder to control the altitude, so you can keep it to plus or minus 200 feet, and you'll be okay. Today we'll transition into a slow flight from a cruise flight at 3,000 feet at a heading of 180. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to reduce the power to 1,500 RPM. We'll add the first notch of flaps, 10 degrees, and as the airspeed decreases, we'll slowly start pitching up to maintain altitude. At 85, we're going to add the second notch of flaps, and at 70 to 75 knots, we'll add the last notch of flaps, 30 degrees. And when the airspeed reaches 55 knots, we'll add power to maintain the altitude. We'll maintain a speed of 50 to 55 knots using the pitch, and we'll maintain level flight by adjusting the power. Uh, slow flight is important because during slow flight, the performance of the airplane is very similar to the performance of the airplane when it's landing. Uh, also, it's a good practice for what we call reverse controls where you control the airspeed of the airplane by the pitch and the rate of descent or climb or level flight by the actual power setting. And you'll notice that in slow flight the uh, airplane is very sluggish. So what we're going to do is we're going to maintain the airspeed and the altitude and we're going to start trying some turns. Okay, we're going to turn to the left. Notice you don't want to turn more than 10 degrees. If you look at the turn coordinator, you'll see that that's plenty. We're actually turning at a standard rate. As the airplane turns, maintain the airspeed, maintain the power setting, maintain the altitude. As we're turning, we're going to maintain the pitch. We're going to maintain the power for the altitude. Since we are flying under VFR rules, we're actually going to use outside references. That's what the plane looks like in slow flight from outside. You can tell it's a nose high attitude. We'll keep turning past north. We'll go all the way to the west. Just get a feel for it. Once the airplane is trimmed, it will stay right there. You want to make only minor adjustments. We're going to roll out the heading of the west. We're going to maintain a little bit of level flight. Okay, we're going to try a turn to the right. This is going to maintain that same pitch for 50 to 55 knots. 2032 RPM seems to be a good power setting to keep the airplane flying level.
we're going to roll out at east we're going to maintain level flight the way you get out of a slow flight we're going to add full power and we're going to raise the first notch of flaps once the airspeed reaches 65 knots we'll raise the second notch of flaps we will keep pitching down to maintain the altitude once we hit 75 knots we can raise the last notch of flaps So right now we have no flaps. As the airspeed starts picking up, we're transitioning into cruise airspeed. And once the airspeed reaches uh, 100 knots, we can reduce the RPM down to 2300. Okay, here we go, the RPMs are reduced. Cruise flight, okay, we're just gonna do a standard turn. I kind of like the view better going the other way. We're going to roll out heading west just because I like it. I like the water, let's put it that way. I, li I like the way it looks. Okay, so we're going to transition back into slow flight again, so we're going to reduce the RPMs back to 1500. We're going to add the first notch of flaps, 10 degrees. We're going to start pitching up to maintain the altitude. At 85, we're going to add the second notch of flaps, 20 degrees. At 70 knots, we're going to add the third notch of flaps, 30 degrees. At 55 knots, we're going to add the RPMs, we're going to take it up to about 2,000, that's what we had before, it worked out pretty good for us. We're going to maintain a little bit of level flight. I'm going to show you what, what's going to happen if you bank too much during slow speed. You're going to stall. Now once you stall, there's a stall recovery procedure. It's something that has to happen very fast. The very first thing that needs to happen when you stall is you need to break the stall by pushing the nose down. Add power immediately and put the flaps up to 20 degrees. This has to happen automatically. And then as we're out of the stall and the airspeed starts picking up, we're just going to start raising flaps, kind of like coming out of a slow flight into cruise. Okay, so we're going to establish a 10 degree turn. Now I'm going to add more, more bank. There's stall. Okay, power, flaps, pitch down. Let the airspeed pick up. 65, second notch of flaps up. At about 75, we can raise all the flaps up. We we'll recovered from a stall, now we're just transitioning back into the cruise. And if you noticed, throughout the whole turn and the stall, we haven't lost any altitude. To be within 100 feet in the Microsoft Flight Simulator, that's, that's pretty good. You're doing something right. I'm just having a lucky day, I guess. At the initial stages of your training, this is one of the hardest things to learn, is the slow flight. Uh, especially the airspeed being controlled by the pitch and the rate of climb, rate of descent, or level flight being controlled by the, by the power setting. Some people just don't get it. Those people that just don't get it, they cannot be pilots, let's put it that way. And that was a demonstration of slow flight. Now this is very important, you should practice this. A lot of people post tutorials on how to make better landings, and they use ILSs, they use GPSs. That is not what's going to make your landing better. What's going to make your landing better is being, you being able to control this airplane in slow flight. Practice and have a good one, alright?